Welcome to data structures and applications subject. We shall study double ended Q in this particular session, followed by the maze problem and uh, other very interesting kind of problems. So let me just uh, take you to the PPT now, where we will study about. Yeah, so we have. Double ended Q. We have seen the normal Q where the insertion is done at rear, the deletion is done at uh, front. And uh, we have also seen some other types of Qs like circular Q, priority Q, etc. Now, double ended Q, these are some of the varieties of the Qs, of course. And one such variety is called as the double ended Q, where the insertion and deletion ha happens on either ends. You can see in this figure that the insertion is happening at front as well as rear. So this is the rear insertion. Similarly, the deletion also happens at front as well as rear. Now rear insertion is old and front deletion is also old. That happens in normal queue. So we don't need to actually discuss about those two functions, but in order to explain the working of this deletion front and insertion rear, we shall show some of the, you know, very important points related to that and how to build the algorithm for the same. Now, in order to understand this, uh, you know, insertion and deletion on either end, the Q is considered to be like a circular one here because so you can see here the dotted lines indicate that it's a folded one, you know. So the thick one is the actual one. So the front pointer and the rear pointer, again we maintain two pointers here, may happen to be such that it may move on either ends. So that's what we are going to study in the subsequent slides. So let's assume that this is the current configuration of the double ended queue where we have two pointers insert and front and let's assume that there are three elements 10 20 and 30. so now as usual like normal queue rear is incremented and uh, elements are added somehow you know in this case probably rear insertion has been done well so now it so happens that supposing assume that i want to insert in the front so i need to actually move this front pointer to back Supposing if I assume that this is my zeroth location, now I would be forced to decrement this front to minus one, so which uh, is not acceptable because array in C or any other language starts from zero or one. So let's assume that it starts from zero. So by decrementing front in order to insert front, uh, you know, it becomes minus one, so that is unacceptable. Hence, we have to assume that this actually goes back to the last one. So that means max minus one because the last location location is addressed as max minus one or max is the uh, you know total size of the queue. So that's why this data lines indicate that it works on a circular fashion. Now similarly the rear uh, probably if you have some space in the front probably you know it, it actually comes back or wraps around. So that's exactly what we try to see here that for instance supposing assume that this is the initial configuration of the queue like 10, 20 and 30 rear is uh, pointing to this. See, this is the figure which we have shown. Now, assume that I want to insert front. So, insertion at the front. So, front has to be decremented. Now, if, as I said earlier, if it is zero, then decrementing that would cause problems. So, instead, we actually need to uh, adjust this pointer or update this pointer front to max minus one, which happens to be the last location in the array. OK, so that's what it is shown here. And similarly. Element 40 is inserted at rear. See insertion may happen at rear. There is no problem because it is working. I mean, it's going to work like a normal queue because insertion at rear is not a big issue. Similarly, deletion front. See deletion front also there is no problem. Assuming that initial configuration front points to 10 and uh, we increment front so that's not a big issue but rear deletion will make rear to decrement by one so it's not 
that rear is not going to be affected because of deletion. Now that's gone. So because it's a rear deletion, obviously we are trying to delete 40 and rear has to be decremented. So these are the two operations new and the old two operations are the rear insertion and friend deletion. So the functions corresponding to this is the friend insertion which we need to see. So as, you, as usual, the function you can see that uh, the uh, you know exception cases like Q full is again we will maintain a global variable called count in order to maintain that how many elements are currently there in the double ended queue and if it is uh, uh, equal to the max that's the size of the queue obviously we cannot insert otherwise we try to check because where uh, uh, you know the friend pointer is and and you can see here if it is uh, it's a post increment. So if rent is zero, uh, we need to decrement actually, uh, obviously. But uh, if it is zero, uh, we need to uh, you know, make friend pointer to go to the last location. That's a wrapper around which we have already explained. So you can see that friend pointer is in you know set to max minus one. So supposing if friend is not pointing to zero. There is no problem. You can actually decrement. So it's already done, and uh, uh, so pointed by friend it is added. You can just you know uh, make two statements if at all this is getting confused. So here what we are doing is post increment plus checking we are doing uh, together. So that you can actually do it. Supposing if friend equal to zero, but check that. Otherwise you decrement friend and then. You know, you can make this X to uh, put it in the location pointed by friend. So either way, it's fine. The idea is if friend is zero, we need to make sure that it's pointing to max minus one. Right. So supposing, of course, because we are adding an new element, so count is incremented. That's the last statement. Similarly, rear deletion is a new function. Now, as usual, it's exactly the same. And uh, when rear is zero, suppose so. You have to make it wrap around. Now, otherwise, you decrement uh, as usual, and you already saved, uh, you know, in the temporary variable pointed by a rear because the rear deletion this time, and that you can return. And since you are deleting an element, so count is decremented. So whenever we add, increment count. Whenever we delete, decrement count. So that's exactly the new two functions which are to be added into this uh, double ended queue. OK. If you follow the slides properly, OK? What is a maze problem? OK, I'll, I'll explain this maybe with uh, another diagram as I've shown just now in the next slide, but uh, uh, in the real world kind of scenario. So first let's understand the problem itself. Right, so what exactly we mean by maze problem? You would have seen, you know, in, in movies, Hollywood movies and uh, in other puzzle solving kind of environment where uh, this is something like uh, uh, a puzzle itself, uh, which is called as popularly known as a maze problem. OK, now this is the original uh, diagram which normally people show that assume that we have a, a, a pattern something like this where we have, uh, you know, the thick uh, lines here are called as the walls. And these white ones, you know, the openings are the 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 path which the rat can actually move. Okay, so this is the entry point for the rat, and this is the exit point. Try to understand the problem first. So we are given a board or a scenario or a framework where we have walls and we have openings. See a lot of uh, computer games. Also, you would have seen something like this 
but this is a very old popular game. Okay, now maze or the rat enters here and you should be able to show the path for this maze to come out from this exit point. Like for example, it can enter here, it can go like this, like, okay, I'll just uh, draw this for you. Okay, I you know. It could start like this. Supposing it goes like this. I mean, it takes a path like this. And let's say it goes like this. It goes like this. It goes like this. And because these openings, it can actually move. I'm just showing some random path here. Okay, something like this. If it's intelligent, probably it can come out. On the other hand, if it would have taken some other path instead of this, let's take, you know, instead of going like this, if it had come like this, then it would see a dead end. Now under this scenario, what it should do, it should actually go back. Now this is where uh, backtracking algorithm which you will study in next semester or recursive kind of uh, methodology which we have because for example it has taken a, a path something like this instead of going instead of going like this so it has come here and it has seen a dead end now it would have to go back to the same point not to the starting point it should go back to the most recent one where it has taken a different path okay see there are two paths available instead of going like this it has taken a, this blue one. so after seeing some dead end it could happen at any point of time after going through so many uh, you know directions so what happens here it has to go back to this and then try out some other options if it has if it doesn't have then you know there may not be any path also but we assume that there is some path available if at all it goes in a proper way. So that's exactly what we are going to solve. So what is the problem now? We to summarize, given this board, okay, the, the walls and the openings, rat entry point is given and exit point is also given. So your job is to inform or find out the path for the rat into this and then come out into the exit point. So this whole thing, the board can be transformed or modeled in terms of a matrix where zero indicates that any cell with zero value indicates that it can move. That means the opening. Wherever it is one, it's a wall. You can see it's shaded, you know, gray shaded. So it cannot go into that direction. For instance, Assume that it starts something like this, this location, and it can go like this because 0, 0. It cannot go like this because there is a 1, and it cannot go like this because it is 1. So it has to go like this, 0, 0, 0. So instead of going like this, though it's a 0, it's just taking this path. So we have to work out that, or it's, instead of going like this. So there are possibilities that it can go left, it can go up, it can go down it can go right it can go diagonally that's what we're going to show in the next slide that what are the possible directions a rat can move so in this case you can see that zero 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 it has come out this assuming that this is my exit point given so given this you know a five by five yeah five rows and five columns and certain cells are ones and certain cells are zero one indicates that it cannot move zero means it can move so your job is to find out the exact path by which the rat can actually enter and exit. So I hope that the problem is clear. It's not the solution. It's only the problem. Okay, now let's move on to some more basic points. So uh, we are trying to now build the solution process for which we need to understand certain things like as I said, Assume that X is the given 
current uh, position at any point of time for the rat. OK, so this is my current position. OK, and just to erase this. OK, from this current uh, position. This current position. Uh, rat can move uh, uh, in the upward direction, which is north, I'll call it or right, east, west, south, northwest, northeast, southeast and south. So there are how many? Eight possible directions uh, to which the rat can actually move. Eight directions. These are possibilities. So supposing if there is a one here, it cannot move. Supposing if there is a one here, it cannot move. If there is a zero, it can move. If it's a zero, it can move. So there are some possibilities. When out of eight uh, possible directions, it may have three zeros and four, uh, sorry, five ones. You know, it depends. So the rat can be at any position. If X represents the current position, then it can move all possible eight. So these are represented like this. Now, further in terms of our array, a two dimensional array, we will try to translate these movements instead of these north south you know that's not going to help us in in building an algorithm so what we do is we will translate this in terms of the array index so i indicates the row index j indicates the so this is i maybe 0 1 2 or 1 2 3 this is j right okay so if this is my current position i comma j right uh, rat can move towards right Supposing so I remain same, same row, but column is incremented. Now same row, but this way left side means J is incremented because if this is one, two, three, this is again one, two, three. Obviously, if this is my current position, left means the column has to be changed, decrement. Here increment j plus one because two becomes three here two becomes one. Similarly, if there is a possibility of movement up north direction, that means rho is decremented. You can see here rho value from two to one. That means i is incremented j becomes same column remains same. So similarly, if this way supposing diagonally rho has to be incremented, column also has to be incremented. So from two it becomes three. Here again, two becomes three. So I plus one, J plus one. So that's it. So we can translate the movement of the rat in terms of the array indexes. That's what this figure shows. So let me erase this. So I think that's the explanation given here. So we will call this array as maze zero comma zero. That is maze is the complete array. And uh, supposing if it's at this point, you know it can move this way if it is zero it can move this way if it is zero it can move this way if it is zero N not every time uh, you know the rat will get all eight possible directions to move because if it is on one side like this you know end or the corner then it has only three possible movements you can see here east south and southeast so only three possible cases. OK, so that also we have to identify. So uh, that we will show in the next slide. So in order to design an algorithm, it is easier to refer to the predefined lookup table because now we do not know when the maze is here, whether we have three every time instead of calculating it, we can readily get this information from a pre stored table which we call it as a lookup table. So how does it look like? It looks like something like this. So supposing if we, uh, you know, I have my directions which is specified as 0, 1, 2, 3. So it's indicated here. 0 means north, uh, you know, 2 means it is east, 6 means west, and this is south. You can see south. So north, south, east, and west. Diagonal again, northeast, you know, all that. So each direction is numbered because we are going to store this in a structure. 
and uh, we could actually find out whether the rat can move or not. So based upon these directions, so we will define or declare a structure where we have uh, two uh, members here called vertical and horizontal. So vertical, you can see here minus one, minus one, and uh, horizontal, no movement, that is zero. And supposing if you're talking about two, direction two, you can see here uh, vertical is zero and uh, horizontal is one. So we can easily show with three values, minus one, zero, one, uh, uh, because that's what uh, you know the movement actually shows, uh, rat movement, in order to make sure that, for example, you can see here, it's uh, easy to understand here, third one, that is this one, you can see here both vertical and horizontal should move. That means get incremented. That's why both vertical and horizontal is one one. On the other hand, let's take zero. That is north from this point north. You can see here vertically it is minus one, you know, and horizontally it is zero. So one is not movement, no movement, and another one is a movement. So this I minus one or uh, J plus one, J minus one, all these things are actually indicated with respect to these structure members, vertical and horizontal. Uh, so that's what is called as offsets. And uh, this entire thing is going to be stored in terms of an array of structure where move is the variable. So move of zero, has two members minus one and zero because remember the movement of the rat is not just one direction it is two directions which we need to specify it's a uh, like longitude and latitude like we normally location in, in mobile phones uh, you know we normally talk about longitude and latitude so both are important so similarly here rat movement is not just one direction but we need both the direction, vertical and horizontal so we need uh, that information uh, depending upon the directional value. So where is the direction? Mu of zero will give me the direction zero. Mu of one will give me the direction one and so on. So once we get all this information stored in the form of a lookup table like this, uh, there's nothing but uh, you know initialized uh, values because it's not going to change. Uh, so depending upon the current uh, position of the rat, given its i comma j values in the array, I can uh, easily find out which direction it has possibility to move and how much offset I should provide. So the offset values will be taken from this move array of structures. So if I want to move up, I can easily know that how much to decrease or increase my i and j value. So basically the movement of the rat on the array is actually calculated by using this table. So we'll show further how is it done. OK, so these are the initial values, maximum rows, number of rows, uh, six by six array. So here I think we have shown three by three. So let's assume uh, that it is a six by six array. So what is the starting position of the rat row column? Maybe one comma one. And what is the exit? Six comma six. So I mean, it, it could change. You can give these values different. You can read it from the keyboard as well. But but we are just fixing these values, you know, starting and uh, exit point and the size of the maze board. OK, now we will try to understand how to calculate the next position for the rat to move using the lookup table. So how to calculate the position of the rat from the current position, current uh, position of the rat. So that is assume that the current location of rat is some rho comma because remember rat keeps moving. So we have to move it how to move from one position to the other. That's exactly what we are going to calculate here. So let's assume that the current position is some row and some 
you know column. For example, I can assume that this is my current one. So three, one, two, three, four, five, five by five array I have taken just for demonstration purpose. So the current position may be, you know, one, two, three, three comma three. Okay. Now after finding, I mean, after getting this value, say current position. Now there could be several possibilities, like eight possibilities or less than that. Now where to move this rat to the next position? So to calculate this next row and next column. So this one. How to calculate that? So next row can be calculated as current row plus, you know, from the lookup table with respect to the direction and it's vertical because row value has to be obtained. Now column value is the horizontal one, okay, the moment. So from the current column, I can just find out what is my uh, next position in terms of the column value. Okay, let us let us uh, assume uh, some sample data so that you can easily understand. So let's assume that may zero comma represent the top left corner as I have already mentioned that it's not one, two, three, but let us assume that it starts from zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. So we have current row to zero, one, two, zero, one, two, right? So instead of one, two, three, I am just assuming that it is from zero. It starts from zero, something like CRA again, right? So 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. So it's 2, comma 2. You can see current row 2, comma 2. What is the current direction? It is 0th position. And the next position of the rat using this formula, next row is nothing but what is the current row? 2. Then current direction is 0. And what is the vertical value? If you look up, uh, see the lookup table for 0, For zero, you have vertical minus one and zero. So you can see here vertical is minus one. Okay. You can see here it is minus one. This is the vertical we are trying to find out. So essentially it becomes one and uh, column it is zero. So it becomes two. So one comma two. So one is row that is this one. One comma two, zero, one, two. That is this one. So it has to move up. Now we are trying to uh, find out all positive. Remember why this current uh, direction is zero? Because we would always start looking for the possibility of the next position for the rat to move. We start from north. See like this. So we go like this. You can see numbering is done in the same fashion. So we start looking for this first, next this, next this, next this and so on until we reach here. That means if we can move here, we will move. If we cannot try for this direction, if we cannot move again to this, there could be one, that is a wall. Then you try for the second direction and so on. So that's exactly what we have done here. Now current uh, position is 2 comma 2 and the next position is uh, uh, 1 comma 2 because we have started from north that is 0. So what happens from this I am getting 1 comma 2 that is this is 1 sec first row and this is the second column 0 1 2. So what I am seeing here is a 1. So this is not possible to move. So I should try for the next one that is current dot direction is equal to one for the same current position. So now the current position of the rat is one comma two, which indicate that it is moved to north. And if it is legitimate, which means that it should have a zero. Okay, if it doesn't, right? If it doesn't, then we have to try for the next direction. Okay. Now what we do is in case if we cannot move, then we will store this return address in the stack because it doesn't mean that supposing assume that I try for the next and I get uh, a zero there, I can move it, but I may go to a dead end and I may have to come back to this position and try for the next direction. 
that's the idea. So out of all the eight directions, any directions fail, I need to store that in the stack so that I can try other possibilities after coming back. So it's it's highly complex recursive mechanism. So the solution process goes like this. If I get a zero, I move to the next position and uh, current position of the rat becomes that. And again, try for uh, um, try for the all possibilities. If anything, I get zero. Again, go there and by luck, if everything is zero, whatever the directions I'm getting, I could possibly reach. So at the in the process, I should check whether I have reached my exit point. So every time you have to check whether that exit point, you know, which we have given as an initialization, see this one, the row column value is equal to the current, uh, uh, you know, rat position so that you can wind up because exiting from the recursion also is very important. OK, now what we do is. We will. Not show the algorithm here because that's not part of your. Uh, uh, this one, uh, you know, syllabus. However, uh, I have actually. Return a program. For uh, implementing you know, based upon this concept, I implemented the maze. Uh, complete, uh, you know, maze problem, the solution for the maze problem, and I will execute that later and show you, um, you know, in, in a simpler way. Like uh, it's not a graphical one; it is just like, uh, you know, movement can be shown. The cells with star, a character star. Zero indicates movement, one indicates no movement, or a wall and star indicate the path. So because we need to find or show the path of the movement for the red, for example, like this. So how do you show? So instead of the zero, I put a star star, star you know all that. So I'll, I'll show you that execution later on. But otherwise the solution process is good enough. We will not go into the detailed, uh, you know, algorithm, etc. But you know, for the benefit of the People who are interested in knowing how is it executed after implementing it in C or C++. I think I should be able to show you in the native class. So let's not uh, deviate from the current topic. That's the idea. So we are just talking about only the concepts here. I hope that the viewers has understood this. Now let's move on to what is known as multiple stacks. Now in a given array, we have seen how a single stack can be uh, you know implemented by using just one pointer called one stack pointer called top that means push and pop uh, from the same end see top is incremented and elements are added and for deletion delete pointed by top and then decrement top so this is very simple uh, and easy to understand but Suppose you assume that we are given an array where we should have or accommodate multiple stacks, more than one stack. It could be any number. So how do we do it? Okay, so we need to accommodate many stacks and uh, since we have multiple stacks, Obviously, we will have multiple tops, but in this case, one single pointer may not be sufficient like top or a stack pointer, but we need also the bottom because remember, or don't get confused. It is not that each stack has got a different container or an array. What we are going to do is we are going to you know, implement many stacks in one array. So we need to find out the segmented portion of each stack. You know, single memory is divided into segments. That means each segment is dedicated for a particular stack, the ith stack, like that. So I think a diagram will help you to understand. So let's assume uh, certain things here. Maximum memory is the total memory size. Supposing uh, you know if I have uh, 
15 locations allocated, three stacks of five uh, uh, locations for each stack, something like that. So maximum memory indicates the single array size. Maximum number of stacks, how many stacks you want to implement. It may not be divisible, so whatever is left out will be allocated to the last stack. N is the number of stacks, of course. So maximum strike for each uh, uh, stack. That means maximum memory is divided by N. And uh, top now is not a scalar, now it's a vector because every stack in this case should have a stack pointer. Every stack should have a stack point, so we need an array. Okay. Similarly, as I said earlier, we cannot manage this with single pointer here, but we need one more pointer called B, which is bottom of the stack. Because it's an array, <clears throat> we can store both. Uh, sorry, we can store the bottom index of each and every stack. So B of zero indicates the zero stack bottom value and top of zero indicate the zero stack what is the value of that particular stacks index. So these two are arrays indicating that for each stack we can store both uh, top pointer and bottom pointer. Again a figure will help you to understand. Uh, finally of course items array uh, actual items to be stored. Yeah. So now you can easily and whatever we have said in the previous slide now it's shown in the form of a diagram. So carefully observe this. We have <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five stacks. Starting from zero, we have five stacks. How many locations that is maximum memory is zero to 40 that is 15. So 15 divided by 5 is 3. That is the maximum size for each stack. <clears throat> OK. Right, so each stack should have both <clears throat> top pointer and bottom point. Right, so for instance, this stack, stack 0, has the top pointer and bottom, but top of 0 and bottom of 0. And similarly, top of 1 and bottom of 1, top of 2 and bottom of and this arrow indicates that the stack grows from lower side to the upper side. For example, top of zero will be incremented and element will be added. So initially it is pointing to minus one. And initially top one is pointing to two. Actually it's stack one's uh, area starts from three because it's pointing to now one less so that's it similar to the first stack so called first stack starts from zero so the my top pointer should point to one less which is minus one so i increment first this and then push so for example now it's pointing to minus one uh, add one to this which is zero so now top of zero will point to zero add one more element then it will be again top of zero will go here bottom will remain as it is here in this position only because bottom should indicate, bottom pointer should indicate which is the bottom position because we need to contain our elements within this boundary of every stack because same memory is, uh, is managed for storing multiple stacks. Okay, now I'll show you how the figure will look like after filling some elements. Okay, so that's whatever is explained uh, is given here. So under uh, you know overflow for instance or uh, empty position all can easily be shown you know when uh, when the condition top of five plus one is bottom that is uh, minus one plus one sorry plus yeah minus one plus one is zero so both top of zero and bottom of zero is point I mean it has the same value which means that it is empty similarly this one. So top of one plus one is three, so which is the value for bottom of one. So that's what I said. Uh, initially, the top pointer will be one less than the bottom. OK, so you increment top and then start adding. So bottom remains there. 
So 15 locations divide by five, you will get uh, three for each stack. OK, so how do we initialize? Uh, top of zero minus one is indicated. Bottom of zero is zero and uh, starting from one, we can just use the simple formula for all the stacks. So n number of stacks we have starting from one, both top and bottom can be easily, you know, in, uh, you know, initialized by using this. For example, maximum is 15 divided by five, three, three into one, one for the first stack, you know, so it's one and one less like that. So top will be one less than the bottom. So that's why you get minus one here, right? So since top of I always points to your filled location, the initial value of stack of zero is minus one, two that we have already explained. Yeah, so this is the, uh, you know, diagram which shows after filling some elements. So how do we show this? Uh, as I said earlier, top of zero was actually pointing to minus one. Now after adding two elements, let's take that I have added 10 and 11 to first stack, that is stack zero. So top of zero was minus one, now it becomes zero, then it becomes one because two elements are added. Bottom of zero remains same. So this is the pointers. So top of zero points to the top of the stack, bottom of zero points to the bottom of the stack. So simple. So given the stack number, I can easily extract or pop the element, uh, topmost element from this stack based upon top of zero. Okay, next, this stack is filled with some elements, full actually. So a uh, top of two, sorry, yeah, top of two is uh, pointing to this five, now becomes six, seven, eight. Now it's almost full, you can see here. Uh, exception cases can easily be calculated that whether it has come to the uh, full case or not. So pushing and popping can be done in a similar fashion, but given the stack number, stack ID is very important. So the push operation can be designed uh, similar to the one, but we need an extra input called stack ID, obviously, because which stack you want to insert. See, 10 I want to insert in stack zero and 30 I want to insert in stack two. So that's the idea. Right. So we have uh, which stack the user wants to push. Secondly, overflow, you know, is not same as the previous one. Obviously, it's not max minus one. See, overflow for this stack may be different from the overflow for this stack, right? So unless we come to the I mean, any any particular stack, its top pointer uh, when it reaches to the bottom of this next stack, probably it's very easy. So that's what we are going to show you. Okay, assume that we have pushed two elements uh, into the stack zero and three elements into the stack two. All the remaining stacks are still empty. And oh yeah, coming to overflow and reflow. So what is overflow? How do we calculate this? I mean, how do we find this after calculation? So supposing let's assume the stack two is already overflowing and uh, any, any new element to be added in stack two should result in an overflow. So when top of i stack, that is second stack, is equal to bottom of i plus one minus one, that's what I said, you know, i stack, we are talking about second stack, so what is the top pointer of second? Top pointer of second is eight. Okay. I will see whether this calculation tallies. And bottom of I plus one, so that is third one, is actually three. Three value is nine, nine minus one is eight, which means, it's, that's what I said, that if top of any stack is equal to the bottom pointer of the next stack, which means that we have come to the, uh, maximum size for the stack. You can see very easily here, top of this current stack is actually uh, eight and uh, bottom pointer of the next stack is actually nine. So that means this has grown. No, this stack two has grown and reached to the top. See, this is not at grow. So top when it moves here, obviously it's grown full like that. Okay, underflow. So if this condition fails, then you can push the element after incrementing the top point of the i stack. 
under flow <coughs> right so we have uh, to check what top of i plus that's uh, i think we have already said uh, very easily um, initial for example we'll take this so top of i plus 1 that is 11 plus 1 is 12 so if both are equal that means it's empty as the bottom pointer when this is false there are elements in the stack otherwise it is uh, underflow that means no elements are there so we can easily uh, pop the element provided this condition is false right so we have in a similar fashion multiple queues so same array we have uh, we have uh, maximum size as uh, 12 in this case 0 to 11 12 and we shall assume here again four queues q0 q1 q2 q3 etc i again i'll show you i forgot to mention that uh, you might be wondering the algorithms for this is same you know for the multiple stack i'm talking about but how to actually manage uh, to write all this you have to modify the existing algorithm of push and pop with stack id so i'll show you that again in the form of a program c program separately right so multiple queues uh, same array like uh, one full size that is 12 and you have four queues and we have front pointers and the rear pointers again with an array so each queue has got both front pointers and rear pointer and uh, so items of course is the actual elements to be stored in this array and uh, starting from zero to maximum size or max size minus one is to store the data elements of all the queue elements so it's it's almost same except that for front and rear we need arrays because it's not just one queue we have multiple queues so this is for four queues it's indicated and uh, similar to multiple stack initialization is shown here for the first one is again front is zero similar to normal queue zero and the rear is minus one for the rest of the queues you can easily do the same fashion like we did earlier no into i and minus one so there uh, in stack multiple stack it is top and bottom here it is front and rear okay okay to summarize uh, uh, this part of the stack and queue normal stack dynamic multiple stack when you talk about queues different uh, varieties of queues normal queue circular queue priority queue double ended queue and dynamic and multiple queues so i think in summary these are the topics which we have discussed under this each topic the algorithm etc program we will discuss in the next session now thanks for watching and uh, we will meet again thank you thank you again